Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit. More, more, more machines, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. Today we're going to upgrade everything. Just kidding, not everything, just power, as always. I have taken this numismatic dynamo and applied both the hardened and reinforced conversion kits to it. I have also given it five fuel catalyzer upgrades to increase the efficiency of its fuel usage. The upgrades hardened and reinforced increase its maximum power output. They also increase the number of augments I could put into it, so I could put in all these fuel catalyzers. Why is this useful? And in this special numismatic dynamo, a diamond makes about 2.4 million RF, whereas here it only makes 1.5. If a diamond is worth 2.4 million RF, one shulker model can actually support, instead of 9,000 RF per tick, 14,400 RF per tick. Two shulker models, observe that I now have not only one, but two shulker models, can support 28,800 RF per tick. Which is, according to this handy math calculator that you get by shift-right-clicking on the crafting calculator, is 56 MV machines constantly running that my power system can support, which is pretty great in my opinion. You need about 2.3 numismatic dynamos for every shulker model you have if they are reinforced and have five fuel catalyzers, just so you know. Just for fun, let's hear the lovely sounds of upgrading a dynamo all the way. Okay, now that we have the power of power, it's time to make more machines and upgrade our pulsating polymer clay setup so that it can make more pulsating polymer clay faster. First, an advanced alloy smelter. Creating pulsating polymer clay in the basic alloy smelter takes 24 EU per tick for 12 seconds. However, if you put this in an MV alloy smelter, it will overclock and use four times the amount of power for a 2.8 reduction in uh, cooking time. Which means this will take about 4.2 seconds to run. That means you can run about 15 simulation chambers off of one MV alloy smelter, and that's all, all I'll be supporting for now. I've done a bunch of calculations to determine that the only other machines I need to upgrade in order to support this amount of alloy smelting is to switch out the basic electrolyzer for an advanced electrolyzer, to switch out the two electric furnaces for diamond furnaces, and to add a second MV chemical reactor for clathrate. I happen to have already prepared everything I need for these machines. One advanced electrolyzer, one advanced chemical reactor, an MVCEF, and my two diamond furnaces. Also, I got all these electronic processors because of my wonderful electronic circuit automation system. Let's take a break and explain why did I do this. Usually what happens is people wait for refined circuits before they automate anything, because refined circuits are so much cheaper and less energy expensive. But I have the power infrastructure to run a lot of MV machines, so I'd like to start automating everything in MV already. It's just difficult to do so when you have to batch craft all of your MV circuits. However, if I'm just making them constantly, I don't have to worry about that in the slightest. So technically it's just bootstrapping me into the next stage, but you're going to be doing that constantly, bootstrapping yourself into the next stage over and over and over again, like I did with my numismatic dynamos before while I was trying to get this whole DML system running. You're always taking yourself into the next stage by making things you'll tear down in the future, and so that's what I've done here. Besides, I've got infinite resources from DML, why do I need to worry? Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Anyway, now for the arduous task of upgrading this system. I'm temporarily removing my ender fluid conduits, and the input to this advanced chemical reactor. And I'm picking up all of my molten ender. And I'm setting down two diamond furnaces, and setting this to extract always from the bottom, by shift left clicking on the conduits with the getter wrench. And I'm filtering the backs of both of these diamond furnaces to hold sugarcane as fuel. And I'm filtering this diamond furnace to receive sand, and this one to receive resonant clathrate. Why? Because these electric furnaces are freakishly slow, and these are freakishly quick. And my sugarcane farm is no longer wasting time making sugarcane for a steam dynamo system that's not running. By the way, in order to improve the usage of my sugarcane, to make it absolutely zero, I created a fluid heater which is turning water into steam. Integrated circuits can be produced by sticking any kind of tier 1 circuit into a crafting GUI, and I have so many tier 1 circuits that it's not a problem. You can right-click on an integrated circuit to open up its GUI, and then you can change its configuration. This is something that's part of crafting, but it will not be used in a recipe. It will just sit there and tell the machine what recipe to use. Sugarcane is now filling up both these diamond furnaces, but I am going to have to set this to round robin so it'll fill both at the same time. Sand is now turning fairly quickly into glass, and at last it's doing it faster than this electrolyzer could use it. I may or may not leave this electric furnace here, however, because I'm suddenly slightly paranoid that the two will not 
that just one Diamond Furnace will not be sufficient to support an Envy Electrolyzer? We'll see. Let's place down our 4 times alloy energetic alloy cables and put down our MVCF, if I can find the correct one, and put down our 4 MV machines. It's a convenient note that Ender.io will tell you what's west, east, north, and south in a way that reflects the direction you're already facing. So west is conveniently facing in the direction of what west actually wants to be. And of course, let's make sure our extract on quartz is set to round robin so that it'll go into both of these machines equally. And now they're running, and we're about to find out if our single diamond furnace is sufficient to support both of these, or if we need to install more. If that horrific case occurs, and we do, I'm actually just going to requisition this electric furnace and turn it into another sand furnace. But we're going to need to find a better way to smelt things soon, and that's going to be the multi-smelter, which I'll make in another episode. Exciting news, we are not making glass fast enough. It's time for the contingency plan. Okay, there's some good news. We seem to be slowly getting an net gain on nether quartz, even though we're not quite getting a net gain on glass, which means eventually we'll get a net gain on glass. Once these pulsating polymer clay bits are exhausted, I'll remove the extract always active from both these alloy smelters and break them and probably use them for batch crafting or something useful like that. And though we seem to be slowly losing pristine Enderman matter, I promise we're not, because technically each Enderman model can support 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.2 other simulation chambers than itself, and so both of these together can support 12.4 simulation chambers, and we clearly don't have 12.4. Is that it for today's episode? Probably. I think that I'm going to move my next project, which is clay electrolysis and a larger cobble works, into the next episode, so that I can dedicate the episode to that and spend some time preparing my machines. Yes, folks, no more excessively long super shorts. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.